Let's have a look at the interactive debugger in the new IDE. It's fairly easy to use. Um, the first step we have to do is change this drop down here from run to debug. So that's going to run it in the debug build configuration. That's going to generate those debug symbols so that we can trace through the source code line by line. That's the main difference there. And the other thing is when we launch it, it's going to open up the debug perspective for us. So let's have a look at that. Here we are in the debug perspective. So we've got a debug window here, which uh, shows us where we're at in our code. Down here we've got our um, source files. Up here we've got the variables view, which shows us the values of the local variables. Whenever we launch in debug mode, uh, it immediately stops at the first line of code. And we've got a number of options here. We can, uh, we can step forward through the code. If we want to um, go into So that stepped over the uh, constructor for application. Here we've got a constructor for application UI, and I can choose to go inside it, to step inside it, so that it will follow into that constructor, and so we can see what happens inside there. So here I can go through those line by line, and see at various points I can inspect uh, the variable. So here I've got i, and I can see that its value is 99 at this point in the code. Make a little room for that. Um, we can look at it in different formats and binary and hex and so on. So that's pretty good. If we click um, step return, that will pop out of the current function that we're in and take us to the next line of code uh, after that function returns. If we want, we can stop the application altogether. And there's one more very interesting thing that we can do. Sometimes uh, Stepping through your code is going to take you too long to go step by step, so if you want to go um, run until you find a particular line of code, uh, we can do that by setting a breakpoint. So in here, let's go to that point. Let's say we want to bypass stepping through all of the code above this because it takes a long time and go straight to this point. If I double click in the gutter here, I get a little blue dot and that lets me know that I've got a breakpoint there. The other way we can add a breakpoint is to right click here and click on either toggle breakpoint or add breakpoint. Anyway, let's uh, get rid of that one. So we'll just stop there. Let's run the debug again. Here we are in the debug perspective. Here we are on the first line of code. I click run and it will go until it hits a breakpoint. And there we are. So it stops right where I had the breakpoint at this uh, at this point in time, I can go and look at uh, what variables are defined. Um, if I have an object, like the application UI object, I can expand that and look at the properties within that. Uh, note here we've got a pointer, so it's a hexadecimal value. Um, a little harder to interpret, but sometimes uh, it's just what you need. So that's how you set a breakpoint. Uh, to continue from there, you can either um, use the stepping functions or you can uh, play until we get to the end. The other thing we can do is we can uh, set breakpoints in our QML code as well. So um, let me go to our QML file, and we can I'll set a breakpoint right here where that console.log gets called, and uh, we'll see how that works. So here we are. We're back at the beginning. I hit play. Let's pop open the uh, simulator. Oh, we stopped at that breakpoint there. I'm going to go beyond that one too by hitting play. And now our UI is active and if I click on output to console, here I go. I've got a breakpoint in my um, in my QML. And I've got the same functions here. I can step over, uh, step out of, and, um, and so on. If I click that button again, we're caught at that breakpoint again. We can see where our breakpoints are in the code, and we can turn those on and off from here. And that's all I wanted to show for now.